Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the West Lindsay series. This is one of the nine districts of Lincolnshire and one of the county's most rural. It has 128 civil parishes. Let's see which one this episode's all about. Okay, today in West Lindsay, we've come to a very small village at the very northern tip of the district. And today I've got Nikki with me, who has been taken by a dog just there. We'll, uh, we'll re reconvene with her in a moment, shall we say. Whenever there's a dog, Nikki always tends to, to uh, try and have a little word with its owner. Dogs are definitely her thing. We're starting this one outside a church and a little library where I've already left a card. This. It's the beautiful little parish of Bigby. The West Lindsay series is sponsored by Gaines Recycles 01427 617 752. For all your cycling needs, this is your one stop shop. Located at 20 Ropery Road or online at gainsrecycles.com. There's a link in the description. Gaines Recycles, ask for Trevor Halstead. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. So today we begin a new area of West Lindsay. For the first time since Keelby, we're in the northeast of the district. This is Bigby and we begin at All Saints Church. The church is a Grade 1 listed building dating from the 12th century with later additions and restorations in 1779 and 1878. It wasn't long before Nicky found me in the churchyard. Have you finished with the dog now? Yeah. <laughs> Say hello Nicky. Hello Nicky. <laughs> no, it was an absolutely beautiful dog and the lady was just telling me that um, she's a rescue greyhound which I absolutely thoroughly approve of having had two myself. And uh, here's a public service announcement for all you out there. If you're thinking of getting a dog, rescue one. There's plenty out there. On the north side of the chancel here is a large alabaster tomb to Sir Robert Tyrrett and his wife. Tyrrett lived in Kettleby, a small hamlet included within Bigby's boundaries. Born in about 1510, he was the eldest son of Sir William Tyrrett of Scotter, who was an MP and Sheriff of Lincolnshire. He was Justice of the Peace for Lindsay from 1547 until 1579. Speaking of former residents, if you're new here, Nikki always likes to have a look around a churchyard or a cemetery if there's one on offer. Apart from architecture, this is her thing. It's not long before we come across something thanks to her either. Check out this rusty grave marker in the shape of a poppy. There were no other markers on this grave. Right next to the churchyard is the village hall. This is the location of the village defib machine, and around the back there's something else to see too. Basic info first though. Around the back of the village hall here, there's an orchard. Let's go and have a look at that. And here is the orchard, which looks pretty and well maintained. There appears to be a little picnic area here too. As far as I could tell, Bigby has no phone box. That's where this purpose-built little library comes into play. It acts almost like a little advertising space too, because there were some business cards in there. The village is situated about 10 miles south of the Humber Bridge and 4 miles east of Brigg, sharing an administrative border with North Lincolnshire. The hamlets of Kettleby and Kettleby Thorpe lie within the parish, although Summerby, which is actually closer to the main village, does not. You can quite easily walk to Summerby from here. The village lies in the Lincolnshire Wolds, a designated area of outstanding natural beauty and boy, over these next few episodes you'll see why it is. There's a board here explaining all about the Wolds. 
A Viking settlement, the name Bigby comes from the Old Norse personal name Becky and the word Birr, meaning settlement or farmstead. Thus, this is Becky's farmstead. Bigby is recorded in the Doomsday Book as Beshaby, with the Lord of the Manor noted as being William, son of Nigel. You wouldn't think it, but Bigby also has some wartime history to speak of. It's one of the four thankful villages in Lincolnshire. That's a term we've met before in both Edenthorpe and Wigsley. To remind you, it means the village lost no men in the First World War. Despite that, there is a war memorial in the churchyard in remembrance of a local man and his comrade shot down during the Second World War. Then there's Pingley Farm, or Camp 81 as it was known, the site of a Second World War prisoner of war camp, which was purpose-built to house 750 low-risk Italian prisoners. By May 1946, Pingley Camp held 984. The camp has been demolished as of January 2009, and the site has been redeveloped as housing. It's right next to Brig Garden Centre, which is also within the boundaries. So according to the architectural expert who is my missus, this house here would never get planning permission these days. Why not, Nikki? Well, I said it would get planning permission, but if it was to extend up into the loft, normally now lofts, uh, extensions and conversions have to have a Velux window where they face the road. And this one hasn't, it's got like sort of dormer windows and you know, you might not get away with that these days. As a former Viking settlement, I thought these street signs were a nice touch. Every single one has a Viking longboat either side of the street name, like this one here at Main Street. We now reach the A1084, the main road between the towns of Brigg and Caister. To the west from here is the hamlet of Kettleby, which has a deserted medieval village, one of many on the Wolds. It's so named because it's where Kettle, a captain of the Dane Canut, is said to have resided. Next, we go over this small bridge and up this footpath back towards civilization. This footpath is quite familiar for us too. It's part of the Viking Way and it passes this little water related compound. I have no idea what this actually was. Are there any waterworks experts out there? The common land here was enclosed in 1756. As a Lincolnshire boy, this kind of view just fills me with so much pride. So much so, I had to mention our flag. So in case you were wondering why the Lincolnshire flag has green and blue on it, this is a perfect example of why. The green is for the fields and the blue is for the sky. Although trust me, having lived in Lincolnshire for a lot of my life, I can tell you the fields aren't always green. The sky it's... isn't always blue either. <laughs> yeah, the sky isn't always blue, that's quite right. <laughs> Although they can't be seen from this distance with the camera, Kettleby Hall's earthworks are in that general direction, reputedly a moated hunting lodge built in the reign of James I. The footpath leaves the fields behind and we're back into the village again, re-emerging onto Smithy Lane. Stick around for the next few episodes because the views out there just get better and better. If you're ever in this area, these are the signs you need to look for to know you're on the Viking Way. They're pretty distinctive, with the Longhorns being the biggest clue. There's just time to mention some notable family names for all the genealogists out there. In 1881, the principal landowner was V.D.H. Carey Elwis, Lord of the Manor. Other landowners included the Moore and the Metcalf families. Bigby once had a national school, built in 1871, and it was shared by Summerby. It also once had a blacksmith's too. That's why the name of this street is Smithy Lane. Even the smallest of villages had a blacksmith's. Here, the blacksmith's house was this property you can see in shot right now. So whilst the blacksmith's house would have been its own thing, the smithy itself would have been something very close to it, not joined to it. It's either we think this property here, or potentially this one here. And to finish us off, Nikki was on hand to leave a TVI card on the parish notice board. If you're new to my channel, this is what I do whenever I see one of these things. And Nikki just said, that's it, done. Not quite, not quite, and I'll tell you for why. Because Bigby might be a very small village, but its parish boundaries cover a heck of a lot of area. That means there's a picture bit coming your way right now because there's plenty in the rest of the boundaries.
And here we are back at the village hall to finish this one off. Some of that stuff you've seen in the picture bit, I would have gone to myself if, I, if I'd have been on my own. But of course, having Nikki with me, I've got to plan the route a little bit differently. So I hope you've enjoyed this. It's been a very short episode. Bigby is a very small village, but a very big parish in terms of area. Time for me to move on to my next one here in West Lindsay, which is just to the south. And it's a lot smaller than this. Probably going to be a very, very short episode. I'll see you when I get there. This has been the parish of Bigby, and I've been Andy, also known as the village idiot and I'm out.